motor driver PCB board used in this project is manufactured and sponsored by the next PCB which is specialized in PCB prototype and assembly manufacturing services for over 10 years. The PCB board Gerber files are available on www.nextpcb.com. I will provide a link in the description. In my previous tutorial, I explained how to convert an old bicycle into a hybrid electric bike. In part 1 of the hybrid electric bike, I explained all the basics including the wheel hub selection, motor installation and basic testing. I highly recommend first you should watch part 1 and then you can resume from here. In almost all the electric bike videos, ready-made motor controllers are used, which really does not help the beginners in making their own electric bike motor controllers. In part 2, we are going to make our own electric bike motor controller using MC33151 dual MOSFETs driver IC, 80 NF70 high ampere MOSFETs, a potentiometer and Arduino. To reduce the price and to explain the extreme basics, I'm going to use the potential meter to control the speed of the electric motor. In this episode, I will cover number one, complete circuit diagram explanation. Number two, soldering. Number three, interfacing. Number four, Arduino programming. And finally, number five, testing. Without any further delay, Let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This schematic is designed in Gatesoft Eagle 9.1.0 version. If you want to learn how to make a schematic and PCB, then watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. The MC33151 Eagle library can be downloaded from our website. First, let's start with the power supply. This power supply is based on the famous LM7812 voltage regulator. J1 is the female power jack and this is where we connect 12 volts from the battery or a solar panel. Two 470 microfarad capacitors are connected at the input and output sides of the voltage regulator. One kilo ohm resistor is connected in series with a 2.5 volt LED. This is a current limiting resistor. The output of this voltage regulator is connected with a VCC pin of the MC33151 MOSFET driver. Pin number 2 and pin number 4 which are the logic input A and logic input B are connected together and then connected with the PWM pin of the Arduino Omega. Pin number 5 and pin number 7 are used to control the MOSFETs. As you can see, the drains are connected together and the sources of both the MOSFETs are also connected together. Over here, we connect the motor while over here we connect the 12 volts. Before making the PCB, I checked the circuit on a wearable board and performed all the tests. After I was satisfied with the results, then I designed a PCB, generated the Gerber files and placed an online order on the Next PCB official website. While the Next PCB website is open, click on the code, enter your PCB dimensions, select the number of PCBs you want to order, select thickness. Finally, select the copper thickness and the solder mask and then click on the A to card button and upload your Gerber files. This is the PCB which I received from the next PCB. As you can see, the quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the blue solder mask looks amazing. I'm really satisfied with their work. Now, let's start the soldering.
As you can see, we are done with the soldering. This is the DC female power jack. This is the LM7812 voltage regulator. These are the capacitors. This is a 1K resistor and a 2.5 volt LED. This is the MC33151 dual MOSFETs driver IC. These are the 100 ohm resistors connected with the gates of the MOSFETs. With this terminal block, we connect the power supply. Over here, we will connect the ground and over here, we will connect the positive wire. The motor will be connected with this terminal block. As you can see, I installed a heat sink. This is really important, otherwise the MOSFETs will really get hot. Use a large heat sink. Now I'm going to explain the connections. As you can see, these are 12 volt batteries which are connected in parallel. The grounds of both the batteries are connected together. The positive of this battery is connected with the positive of this battery. One wire is soldered with the ground and the other wire is soldered with the positive. The power supply wires are connected with this terminal block. The two wires coming from the motor are connected over here. If the motor spins in the wrong direction, you can change these wires. So this is how the batteries and electric motor are connected with the controller board. On the Arduino side, the connections are really simple. Pin number 3, which is the PWM pin, is connected with the PWM female header and blue wire is the ground. This is a variable resistor or potentiometer which are used to control the speed of the electric motor. This is a very simple and basic program. A variable resistor is connected with the analog pin A0 of the Arduino. Pin number 3 of the Arduino which is the PWM pin will be used to control both the MOSFETs. The PWM V is set to output while resistor is set to input. In the wide loop function, we simply read the variable resistor, then using the map function, we limit the value from 0 to 255, and then finally, we use the analog write function, which you are quite familiar with. I have already uploaded this program. Let's watch this project in action. I already explained the interfacing before the final installation. First, I tested the Arduino programming and the motor driver circuit. As you can see, I can successfully increase and decrease the speed. As you can see, using this variable resistor, I can control the speed of the electric bike. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.